Justin Trudeau gave us a hint of what his economic platform would look like earlier in the week. Trudeau centered his platform on the middle class, and it focuses on two parts. One, he's creating a child benefit package, so support for families with children, and two, taxing the rich, so raising income taxes for those making over $200,000 a year. Now, it sounds great in theory, but how will it play out practically? For that, we turn to Dr. Ian Lee, professor at the Sprott School of Business. Dr. Lee, thank you for being here. Let me start by asking you your sort of initial reaction to Justin Trudeau and the liberal pro- the liberal platform. Well, it, it's you know pretty creative. It's pretty innovative. Um, it got a lot of attention. Um, I, I think the um, it's not what was there. It was the real question is to uh, look behind the camera, so to speak, and say, well, why are they doing this in the first place? And the whole premise of this, and he did state it in the press conference, is that the middle class is languishing, it's declining, it's deteriorating, it's in very bad shape. Mm-hmm. And um, this simply is not supported. Uh, mm-hmm. by StatsCan data. This is not supported by OECD data. Well, even a year ago, uh, there, was a, there was a column or a, a study that was published in the New York Times that talked about how Canada's middle class is the richest in the world. It's the one of the, uh, certainly one of the, well, it's the wealthiest of the large OECD countries. And of course, the OECD countries are the wealthiest countries in the world. And when you, and that's not the only study. When you look at the StatsCan data, you look at OECD data, you look at that Luxembourg study to which you're referring, Every one of these studies document empirically using actual income data that the uh, middle class are prospering in Canada and are doing better relative to other wealthy uh, countries. So the whole premise of the plan was grounded in something that isn't uh, isn't accurate. So uh, and so you know so we have to start from that I think we have to start from that point. So so based on those studies, it would seem as though the Conservatives are doing something right now. I want to ask you about some sort of some of the specifics of what he's detailed, specifically the child benefit package. This is a four billion dollar plan, and the Liberals say they'll pay for it by reversing income splitting, which is the Conservatives' policy that allows one family member to split his or her income with their spouse for tax purposes. So that's that'll be two billion dollars. But where's the other two billion coming from? Well, it hasn't been fully costed out. Um, in the um, uh, uh, 18 of the 22 billion is coming from folding the four conservative programs into the the new liberal program, um, and uh, but there's two billion that's not yet accounted for. So either that suggests there's going to be a future tax uh, increase should they be elected and implement this, or there's some kind of a other. Uh, higgledy-piggledy that's going on that uh, has not yet been disclosed to us. It sort of sounds like they're making it up on the fly. Gerald Butch, Justin Trudeau's chief advisor, yesterday was musing about maybe taking money from the surplus, which actually isn't that large. That's right. The surplus is in the budget. I was in the budget lockup, actually, and it's uh, forecast, <laughs> forecast at $1.7 billion. I'm not suggesting it's a, a bad forecast, but any forecast is about something that's going to take place in the future, mm-hmm. and the future has not yet arrived. So we don't yet know whether that's going to be 1.7 billion, or if the economy slows down, it might be one quarter of 1 billion. Economy speeds up, it could be more than 1.7 billion. But the point is, they're building it on um, a wing, a hope, and a prayer. I know that Justin Trudeau has also talked about raising income taxes on over 200 000, on people making over $200,000 a year. Will that generate some sort of revenue? Will that actually work? This is, um, that's an excellent question. Uh, we don't yet know. And anyone who suggests that we know conclusively uh, is, again, making a forecast about the future. We do know this, that uh, people at the top, uh, at the most, uh, and the top 1%, top 5%, tend, uh, are highly educated people. They tend to be professionals, by the way, medical doctors, chartered accountants, uh, people with executive MBAs in corporate finance, that sort of thing. These people are very mobile. That is to say they can move to the United States or move to Europe uh, uh, very easily because their skills are in great demand around the world. Secondly, because they have high incomes, they can hire very, very good accountants who can uh, do some very creative things perfectly legally uh, under the Tax Act. And so the forecast revenue extraction is, uh, in my view, uh, doubtful. Uh, France tried this only three years ago. And what they had was not capital flight, they had brain drain flight. People, high income people were leaving the country. The most famous example was the famous French actress, Gerard Depardieu, who renounced his French citizenship and took up uh, Russian citizenship. So the point that I'm getting at is tax increases on the high end are leaky. 
That, and it's perfectly legal. I'm not suggesting that they're going to do anything corrupt or illegal. And and so relying on that to you know bet the uh, uh, you know a good chunk of your money on the top one percent, given this uh, history that they it is a leaky tax, is probably not as prudent as it should be. Justin Trudeau talks a lot about the middle class. He's been talking about the middle class since he became the leader of the Liberal Party. In your expert opinion, Dr. Lee. Will these two policies that he, sens that he has now outlined, will they actually help the middle class? Will this help growth or does this lead to redistribution? It certainly leads to redistribution. Look, he's been very clear. Let's give him credit. He said, I'm going to take th $3 billion from the top 1% and I'm going to redistribute it to the middle income uh, group. Uh, in the the middle the middle class to use his phrase mm -hmm. and so there's a straight income redistribution there um, when you ask questions how is this going to affect economic growth remember economic growth is is determined by an enormous number <laughs> of variables um, I I can state this and and this is an empirical statement over the past 40 50 years the OECD countries which are the 34 wealthiest countries of the world and we're talking West Europe Germany France Sweden Norway Italy Canada US Japan okay um, the trend and this has been well documented by the OECD the trend has been to gradually reduce both the corporate income tax rate mm -hmm. and the personal income tax rate because we know that people and companies spend enor enormous amounts of money on accountants and so forth to legally uh, minimize their taxes. And so what we found is that this is a paradox about taxes. When you lower the rate of tax, you often increase the amount of taxes collected. And people hmm. say that doesn't make sense. Yeah. It actually happened in Canada. When we reduced the corporate income tax rate, the amount of taxes collected went up. And so I'm, I'm and so given that taxes do slow growth as a general statement, I'm not sure that this is the way to go. I instead I was so disappointed that instead of talking about taking it from one group and moving it to another group, why isn't he talking about growing the pie, making the pie bigger? In other words, instead of growing at 1% or 2%, why isn't he proposing uh, policies and initiatives to make the economy grow more rapidly? Things like uh, uh, pipelines, which will enhance economic growth, uh, or more free trade agreements, uh, getting rid of all the internal barriers in sure. Canada between each of the provinces, which retard very significantly economic growth. Some have suggested it's because he's trying to replicate Obama's class warfare style campaign here in Canada. Do you think that's going on? Well, I, as I said at the very beginning, I think this is much more a political document than it is an economic document. Hmm. It's designed to, um, you know, the one percent are by definition only one percent, right? Uh, whereas there's an awful lot of people in the middle class, and so he's counting on the fact that there's going to be a lot of people in there who are going to vote their wallet, vote their self-interest, and say, I don't mind getting it from that other person. Uh, whether or not it's successful politically is yet to be determined. I'm somewhat more skeptical because what we haven't talked about is that in order to fund this, he has also, he, Mr. Trudeau, has said they're going to cancel the tax-free savings accounts, which are wildly popular with seniors. So seniors are not going to be happy about this. And by the way, seniors vote big time. Very high percentage of seniors vote. And of course, the tax increase he's proposing is going to fall on the business owners and business managers. And remember, even though it's 1%, I am certain that the Conservatives are already working up campaign ads saying, okay, he's going after the 1% now, but the next time he's going to go after the 5% when they're short of money and the 10%. In other words, you are next. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so I think that, you know, this may be too clever by far as other people, as people start to realize uh, the consequences and the knock-on effect of this, uh, but this of course is yet to be determined. Cancelling of course the doubling of the TFSA that the Conservatives introduced in their latest budget. Now last question to you because I wanted to fit this in. The Liberals have been somewhat evasive about what income range constitutes the middle class. There was some speculation perhaps in his speech that it would go up to 90,000. I know other MPs have suggested it might be larger. Uh, what do you make of their sort of evasiveness in trying to actually define what the middle class is? Well, I think what they're trying to do, again, it's political on their part, not economic. They're saying, you know, we're not going after the bottom, the bottom quintile, the bottom 20%, because that's 
presumed to be assumed to be NDP territory, mm -hmm. uh, and they're and they're not. We already know they're not going after the high uh, the the top quintile. So what I think they're trying to do is do their measurements in such a way to maximize the number of votes that they potentially will attract. And so this uh, thing that they're engaged in, this exercise that they're engaged in, it's not economics. It's political strategy to say how can we maximize our vote. Uh, yield our vote uh, instead of dividend yield or return on their investment they're trying to re uh, generate a maximum political uh, yield for this so I, 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 I think we have to understand it in, in that context. Forget Christia Freeland I think the Liberal Party needs someone like you uh, helping them out with their economics Dr. Lee but thank you so much for your expertise. My pleasure thank you.